Hi everyone, I'm Ellie. Today I'm going to share my story with you. It's not easy to talk about my weaknesses, but I have no immunity at all. My mom says it hasn't developed in me since I was born. Doctors put me in an oxygen chamber as soon as I was born to keep the germs away, so I spent my whole childhood and teenage years locked up. I would stand by the window and look at the happy kids my age. They were chatting, laughing, enjoying life. A couple of them were even holding hands. I envied them for I had never left the walls of my house. I have to say that our whole house was sterile. We wouldn't even open the windows so no germs could get in and not to harm my defenseless body. Every person coming in from the street had to go through a disinfecting box. Four nozzles located on the walls shot out a disinfectant mixture. That way, the clothes, shoes, and things the person brought with them became absolutely sterile. One evening, I greeted my mother from work. After she was treated, I could already hug her. I grabbed the bags and dragged them into the kitchen. Mom and I sat the table, just in time for the disinfectant booth to start humming again. My older sister Chelsea and my dad were standing in it. A few minutes later, we were all sitting around the table eating dinner. Chelsea suddenly laughed. What's wrong with you? I asked. I remember a kid burping out the alphabet at the talent show today. The whole audience laughed so hard. That's great. What was your act? Me? In the talent show? Pfft, no way. I would have recited my poems. I imagined going on stage in a beautiful dress, opening my diary, and sharing my most personal poems with the audience. My mother saw that I was completely lost in my fantasy world and abruptly interrupted our conversation. No talking at the table! For some reason, my mother did not want me to know what was happening outside of our home. I went to my room. I tried to go to sleep, but I couldn't. So I came out of my bedroom, and through the crack of the door, I looked into Chelsea's room. My sister noticed me and opened the door. Come in already. I went inside and got a little shy. Can you tell me more stories about school? Of course. Chelsea and I talked for like an hour. I was always jealous of her. She was only a year older than me, but she could live life to the fullest. Suddenly, there was a dim glow from the headlights in the windows. I knew who it was. John. Chelsea's boyfriend. I'll go out the window, but it better be our secret. Okay? How did you even open the window? Just push the button. I walked out of the room and I heard the window slam. I pressed the quartz button. My parents installed special lights in every room to help keep the germs that were dangerous to me out. I went back to my room and was about to go to bed, but I noticed the figure in the window across the street. When I got closer, I saw a guy my age. He was dancing in his room. I couldn't hear the music, which made his antics look even funnier. The guy stopped and quickly turned his head in my direction. I ducked under the windowsill, hoping he didn't see me. After catching my breath, I lay down on the bed. But a few seconds later, I heard a small pebble hit the glass. It must have been the neighbor. He came to tell me what he thought of my spying skills. And indeed, in the window across the street, I saw the same guy again. He was smiling and waving at me. Oh no, he did see me. The guy opened the window and started saying something, but I gestured that I couldn't hear him. He thought about it, and then he walked away somewhere. But he quickly returned with a blackboard and a marker in his hands. The board had Alex written on it. He pointed his finger at me. I quickly glanced around the room. I managed to find a couple of sheets and a marker. I wrote Ellie. Alex smiled, so with the help of the signs, we communicated for a few days. One evening, Alex showed up at the window with a very puzzled look on his face. He hesitantly stroked the marker across the sign, then he turned it toward me. He wrote, shall we go for a walk? I replied that I couldn't, and I wrote, I'm sick, you should come visit me. The guy smiled and nodded. During dinner, I sat at the table, picking vegetables on my plate. Everyone noticed that something was wrong with me. Is everything okay, sweetheart? Daddy asked. Daddy, can I invite guests into the house? Of course. But before he could finish, mom interrupted him. And who is this guest? I it's Alex, the guy from next door. No way, honey. He'll bring germs. We can't take any chances. But mom, he'll go through the disinfectant box just like you. We don't know who he is or what diseases he has. I was enraged and slammed my fist on the table. The vegetables on my plate jumped up. 
This is ridiculous. Can't I have friends? We are your friends. I cried because of such a cruel injustice. I left the table and went to my room. Once in my room, I let my tears flow. There was a knock and my sister came into the room. She sat down next to me. It's not fair, sis. If you need help, just tell me. An idea popped into my head out of the blue. I need your window. What? It's risky. If mom and dad find out. We won't tell them anything. Chelsea thought about it and nodded. But under one condition, I'm worried about your health, so we'll protect you properly. I was surprised, but my sister winked at me and smiled. You'll see, it's going to be awesome. A little while later, I saw Alex in the window. I showed him my sign. It read, follow my instructions. He thought it was some kind of game and agreed. Alex climbed through the window in my sister's room. As soon as the window slammed shut, Chelsea hit the sanitation button, so Alex had to wait a few more minutes. After the necessary procedure, Chelsea showed him the door to my room. When Alex saw me, he opened his mouth in surprise. It wasn't because of my divine beauty. I was standing in the middle of the room wearing a yellow protective suit, and my face was covered with a protective mask. Alex laughed. Are you having a costume party? I forgot my costume. Sit down, you jokester. There's something I need to tell you. At first, Alex didn't take my story seriously, but the more I talked, the sadder his eyes got. And you've been in this house your whole life? Yeah. I know another girl with the same story. What's her name? Rapunzel. Alex and I laughed. He managed to change the tone of the conversation to something more cheerful. We chatted until the break of dawn. Finally, the guy got up and headed for the exit. I don't know how it happened, but I suddenly grabbed his arm. Alex turned around, looked into my eyes, and then he put his arm around me. We stood like that for a few more minutes, then he left. I spent the whole day daydreaming about my new friend. He would come over at night, we would talk, and sometimes play board games. One night, the door to my room swung open. My mother was standing at the door, and the sight of her didn't promise anything good. Get away from my daughter! I'm sorry, ma'am. We were just talking. You could have killed her. She has no immunity. Mom grabbed Alex by the arm and started shaking him. Let him go. I stood up for my friend. Alex broke free. I've been here many times and nothing happened. You're just torturing your daughter. Dad came into the room. Unlike mom, he was calm and just walked Alex out the door. Mom was furious. You're not going to see that boy again. You have no right. Believe me, it's for your own safety. My parents left and I heard the key turn in the keyhole. I ran up to the locked door and started pounding on it with my fists, sobbing helplessly. The next night, I kept waiting for Alex to show up at the window, but he wasn't there. He showed up much later and made himself known the old-fashioned way by throwing a pebble at the window. The guy pulled out his walkie-talkie and I heard his voice. It was so great that Alex was able to give me a walkie-talkie beforehand. I got some bad news. After talking to your mom, my parents decided to move. Then, the connection was cut off. He pulled out a piece of paper and, after a little hesitation, he turned it toward me. The writing said, I love you. I wanted to write the same thing back, but someone turned on the sprinklers and they sprayed Alex with water. I heard my mom yelling at the guy. He gave me one last look and ran away. Mom made a big scene again. Why is she doing this to me? I spent the whole night wondering what I should do. I cannot live in this room for the rest of my life as Rapunzel in her tower. When morning came, I started looking out the window occasionally. Alex's parents were loading things into their car. Soon, Alex himself appeared near the car. He was very sad. He got in the backseat right away. I panicked, running around the room, desperate to do something. I ran to the door, pulled the knob, it was locked. The only way out was through a closed window. I hastily put on my hazmat suit and my mask. I yanked on the window, but it wouldn't budge. Alex's parents' car started. It was now or never. There was a metal chair in the corner of the room. I grabbed it and threw it through the window with all my might. The glass shattered into tiny shards, even through my suit. I felt the cool wind rush into the room. Someone started pounding furiously on the door. What are you doing? Mom yelled. At that moment, the car was already backing up. 
I carefully climbed out the window, but I heard a cracking noise. There was a big hole in my suit. It was no longer sealed, but I didn't care. I climbed out onto the roof of the house, and from there, I climbed to the roof of the garage and jumped to the ground. Mom showed up at the broken window. Come back here immediately! I didn't pay attention to what she said. Alex's car drove away, and I ran after it. I held out what I'd wanted to say for so long, but the mask on my face made me completely inaudible. So, I took a desperate step. I took off my mask, I filled my lungs with air, and shouted, Alex, I love you! But hardly anyone heard me. I felt dizzy, and my legs couldn't hold me at all. I didn't even realize how I lost consciousness. I woke up from a strange sensation. Something had dripped on my face. When I opened my eyes, I saw that I was lying in Alex's arms, and tears were streaming down his cheeks. You're alive! Alex was happy. Yeah, I just inhaled a bit too much oxygen. I'm not used to it. Alex and I smiled shyly at each other. I looked around and saw my mom on the doorstep. She wanted to run up to us, but this time, my father wouldn't let her. Later, my parents explained to me that it seemed that my immunity had gradually recovered with age, but my mother didn't want to risk it. She also wanted to shield me from the cruelties of the real world. Of course, there's a lot to blame her for, but should I? By the way, Alex hasn't moved anywhere, and we walk together every day now. I can't stand sitting at home. Do you think your parents overprotect you too? Write your answers in the comments, like, and subscribe to our channel. Hi, I'm Elizabeth, and I'm something of a princess, but you can just call me Z. I was born into an almost royal family in England, and my parents were super rich. I had everything I could wish for. Well, almost. I didn't have any siblings, and I really wanted one. Once when I was eight, I was on a swing at the park when a kid pushed me, and I landed in a puddle of mud. Hey, why'd you do that? You're on the big kid swings, loser. Go play on the kitty slides. I'm eight, you jerk. I think you're a liar. I charged towards him, but my nanny saw me just then and came running to stop me, and the boy ran off laughing. Later that night, I cried to my parents. If I had a sister or a brother, no one would mess with me. We'd be such a great team. We'd kick everyone's butts together. Being an only kid sucks. Just a few days later, they gave me the best news ever. I was getting a brother. Wow, finally. I don't have to play with these anymore. I'm getting a little brother. Yay! Big brother, darling. We're adopting a boy from an orphanage who we really like. And he's a year older than you. Even better! But Shane was a very quiet child and didn't talk much in the beginning. Until one night, I sneaked into his room. But as soon as I got in, he jumped on me. What do you want? Why are you here? Um, I just came to share some of my toys with you. He immediately got up and offered me his hand. I'm sorry. I just thought, what? You bought all these toys for me? Yeah, we're siblings now. And you can play with my dolls too. Suddenly, he was all smiles. Mom was right about you. You really are nice, Elizabeth. Oh, sorry, Z, cause you're too pretty to be called Elizabeth. <laughs> we bonded real quick, and in no time, we were inseparable. And I made sure he never felt left out in his new family. Don't open your eyes yet, I have a big surprise for you. Oh, wow, a puppy. We named the puppy Caesar, and Shane became so fond of him that he even let him sleep in his bed. I loved Shane, but sometimes he acted really weird. Once when he was 11, Shane got really sick and had to stay in bed. But sometime later, I saw he was running after one of the servants, kicking him to the ground. You thief! How dare you try to take my Caesar away from me! Shane, let go of him! I pulled him away and the servant ran for his life. Z, he tried to steal... No, what are you talking about? I asked him to take Caesar out for a walk since you were sick. Shane looked really embarrassed and ran back inside. Later that night, I went to his room to ask him why he behaved that way. Cause Caesar is special, Z. You gave him to me, and I never want to lose anything close to me ever again. What do you mean? It's just that I can't trust anyone, and I don't want to talk about it. Well, that was weird. And if he didn't want to talk about it, I wasn't going to force him either. Shane was really possessive about the things he loved. But other than that, 
things between us were great and we grew closer over the years. One day when I was in 10th grade, the teacher introduced a new boy to the class, Jai, a really handsome Indian guy who looked like he walked straight out of a Bollywood movie. During the class, he came and sat right next to me and I caught him sneaking glances at me, but he didn't say a word. When class was over, he finally spoke. Um, hey, as you know, I'm new here. Do you mind showing me around the school and maybe help me catch up on whatever I missed? Well, usually I'm really busy, but today's your lucky day. So sure, come with me. I took his hand and while showing him around the school, we both talked and laughed so much. When we reached the backyard, he saw little puppies and immediately took out some food from his bag to feed them. And that melted my heart. He was so nice and we instantly clicked as friends. Within a week, Jai became really popular for his fashion sense and rich, handsome looks. He's wearing Armani jeans today. I sneaked into the locker room yesterday. The abs under that branded hoodie are great too. Those stupid girls drooled over him like crazy, but I wasn't gonna let them have him. So I asked him if he wanted to study with me in the library and he agreed. My plan worked because no hot girls ever showed up in the library. Over the coming days, we just got closer spending time together, and I was actually falling for him. And judging by the way he looked at me, maybe he was falling for me too. Then one evening when I went home, Shane surprised me with his question. So, who's the guy? He's new. Wait, what? How did you know? You can't stop smiling and I'm your brother. I know everything. Now spill the beans. I told Shane about Jai and he seemed really eager to meet him. Since Shane was in a senior grade, he studied in a different block, so they'd never meet in school. I planned a movie night for the three of us and I knew Shane was gonna love Jai, but instead, I got the shock of a lifetime. Hey Jai, this is Shane and- Jai? Shane? Suddenly, both Shane and Jai froze up like statues, staring at each other. You guys already know each other? You thief! What are you doing with my sister? Trying to steal her too? Shane, what are you saying? He's a thief, Z. He stole my father's gold watch at the orphanage. No, I didn't. I didn't steal anything. This is crazy, man. Shane turned red and tried to attack Jai. I tried to make him stop, but he didn't listen. So I pushed him and took Jai away. Gosh, what was up with Shane? Later, Jai explained to me that he and Shane used to be really good friends a long time ago in the orphanage, but then Shane's watch went missing and he was convinced Jai had taken it. I tried to convince him that I didn't, but he wouldn't believe me. He made my life miserable at the orphanage, but luckily I got adopted by a millionaire soon after. Well, that did sound like Shane. He was so weird about his things, but he was my brother. So later that night, I went to talk to him about Jai, but instead of listening to me, he just got mad. Why are you taking his side? Don't you believe me? He stole my father's watch, the one memory I had of my real family. He's a bad guy, Z. Stay away from him. But Shane, he said he didn't steal your watch. And you believe him, Z? You weren't there. No one believed me back then. And now you won't either? You're just like the others. And then he pushed me out of his room. I couldn't really believe Jai was a thief, but the way Shane was so persistent about it, I felt a bit suspicious. So I decided to spy on Jai a little. The next day after school, I saw Jai leaving and decided to follow him, but he went into an old alley behind the school and rode off on a rusty bicycle. Riding a rusty bike when he said he was rich? Something was really fishy. I followed him in my car and he parked outside one of mom's restaurants and went in. But minutes later, he came out wearing a waiter's uniform. And now, I was 100% sure he was poor and had been lying about it this whole time. But why? Then suddenly, I heard the manager of the restaurant yelling at him. Is this the time to come? Why don't you just come after all the customers are gone? You're fired. No, please don't do that. I, I really need the money. My mom is sick and I need to get some medicine for her. I can't lose this job, please. Oh gosh, he was working so hard for his family. No way a guy like that could be a thief. But the manager didn't listen and made him leave. And even though I was mad at him for hiding the truth from me, I decided I had to help him first. After Jai left, I went in and asked the manager to rehire him. Oh really? And who do you think you are to tell me that, little girl? The owner of this restaurant, mister? And make sure to give that guy a raise or else you'll be fired. The next day when Jai came to school, 
He looked really happy, and I knew the manager took my warning seriously. But now, I decided I was going to play along with Jai's lies until he felt comfortable enough to share it with me. Till then, I tried to help any way I could without making it too obvious. Soon after, it was my 17th birthday when Shane came into my room at midnight and placed a kiss on my forehead. Happy birthday, sis. Oh, Shane, thanks so much. Now, where's my gift? You'll have to wait for that till the evening. My parents were throwing a grand party for me in the evening. All the kids from school were invited, but I was the happiest when Jai gifted me a gorgeous Indian dress. This is beautiful. I'm definitely gonna wear this for the party tonight. At the party, everyone was just staring at me and Jai as we were dancing our hearts out on the dance floor. But then suddenly, the music went off and I heard Shane's voice. Attention, everyone. Z, here's the best gift a brother could give his sister. Unmasking the fake people in your life to keep you safe. Fake people? Could he be talking about Jai? Suddenly, all the lights went off and the big screen was filled with Jai's pictures. Everyone, I present to you a liar, a cheat, and a thief. Please, clap for Jai. He rides a broken bicycle to school but tells everyone it's a limo. He lives in a small house with his poor mom but tells everyone it's a mansion. Everyone started murmuring and staring at Jai and he just dropped my hand and ran outside. And I felt so freaking angry that I just went and slapped Shane in the face. You're the worst, Shane. What? But he's been lying to you. I already knew it. I knew he was poor, but that didn't make him a cheater or a thief, Shane. It's not a crime to be poor, and you're completely insane. Shane, I don't know what's wrong with you, son. I'm ashamed of what you just did. Why does nobody ever believe me? Jai lied, but no one believes me. He lied before, and he's lying now. He's a thief. A thief, you hear me? That is enough. Mom and Dad took him aside, and I ran after Jai to see if he was okay. But he'd already left, and he didn't even pick up my calls. The next day, when I reached school, I saw his locker was painted with horrible names, and all of his stuff was lying on the floor, trashed. I searched for him all over, and finally found him sitting in the backyard, all sad. Jai, are you okay? I'm really sorry for what Shane- Wait, why- why are you sorry, Z? You're not mad at me for lying to you? I was, in the beginning, but then I figured you must have your reasons. Beginning? What do you mean? I found out long ago. But listen, you being rich or poor never mattered to me. You're a good person, and that's all that matters, Jai. Tears fell from his eyes, and he just hugged me. But later that day, when I got home, something terrible had happened. Shane had left the house, and Mom and Dad told me he was never coming back. I tried to contact him, but nothing worked. And this just broke my heart. How could he just leave like that? For days, I didn't feel like doing anything. So I just stayed in my room and watched some awesome stories by MSA, and found out I wasn't the only one with a weirdo brother. But then one day, Jai came to my house looking for me and cheered me up. He took me out for walks and often stayed back at my place to study. So how do you afford all those branded clothes? Oh, that's all fake, knockoffs, and stuff from the thrift store that my mom gets me. It's all about wearing it with confidence. How did your mom adopt you if she wasn't so well off? Oh, she's my birth mom. She came back for me. But why did you lie about being rich? He paused for a second. Everyone picked on me for being poor ever since I was a kid. But when I got into an expensive school because of a scholarship, I just didn't want anyone to look down on me. I deserved to be there. Well, I guess most kids in his place would have done the same. Weeks passed by and then one day, I insisted on seeing Jai's place. At first, he was hesitant, saying it wasn't fancy enough for me, but I kept bugging him till he took me. I'm gonna get you something to drink. You make yourself comfortable. He left, and I noticed a picture of his younger self on a shelf. So cute! I picked up the frame to take a closer look, and just then, I noticed something half covered in wrapping paper. Was it something for me? But when I saw what it was, I was stunned. It was a gold watch with the same inscription in the back that Shane had described his dad's watch had. Oh my god, this was Shane's watch! Just then, Jai came in, looking at the watch in my hand. He dropped the tray he was holding. This is Shane's dad's watch, the one he said you stole, right? Yes, yes, it is, but I, I can explain, Z. 
Explain what, Jai? Are you still gonna tell me you didn't steal it? I, I did, okay? I did steal it. Shane always went around the orphanage showing off his dad's watch. But unlike him, I'd never met my dad and I just felt jealous that he had something so nice and I didn't. So I stole it. But I was just a kid then, Z. I felt terrible later. Oh God, Shane had been right all along. And the way Shane acts, it's not his fault. After I stole his watch and no one believed him, the bullies at the orphanage often hid his stuff. And when Shane would complain about it, they'd put it back in place, making him look like a complete fool. OMG, he went through so much and I didn't believe him. I was such a horrible sister. I'm so sorry, Z. I just couldn't admit I'd stolen it because I knew you'd never forgive me. But I've been feeling so awful. So I was just wrapping up the watch to send it to Shane anonymously. Wait, send it to Shane? So you know where he is? He told me he'd been trying to track down Shane for a while and he'd finally found his address. I immediately left for the address and when I finally saw Shane, I just ran and hugged him. Shane, oh God, I'm so sorry. Jai admitted he stole your watch and I feel so ashamed that I never believed you and I slapped you. I was such a horrible sister. Please, please forgive me. Z, hey, hey, it's okay, chill. I forgive you, okay? Relax. He calmed me down and then we went for a walk. I was definitely hurt that you didn't trust me, but I know I acted crazy at times and made things tough for you. And exposing Jai like that, it was wrong. Ugh, don't mention him. He's a jerk. But hey, I have something for you. Oh my God, that's, that's my father's watch. Jai had it all this time? Yeah, he said he could never sell it. I told him everything and he just hugged me. I begged him to come back home and he did. Then just a few weeks later at Christmas dinner, Shane walked into the dining room along with Jai. What's he doing here? He came to me and apologized and refused to leave until I forgave him, which I did eventually. And it's time you forgive him too, Z. I'm sorry, Z. I hid the truth from you, but that's because I was afraid to lose you. So can you please forgive me and give me another chance? If Shane can, then I guess I can too. If you promise not to hide anything anymore, I promise. Hi, my name is Lucy and I'm from Canada. When I'm not busy fantasizing about Josh, the hottest boy in school, I lead the math and science club, aka the nerd squad. One day, my sister Mel caught me kissing my bathroom mirror, pretending it was Josh. She got it all on video and shared it with the entire school. I was humiliated. What do you think Josh said when he saw the video? Watch till the end to find out. Mel and I were one year apart, Mel being the older one. Our dad raised us and neither of us had ever met our mom. Every time we asked our dad about her, he said that she left right after I was born, married another man and moved to another country. She was definitely not winning the mom of the year award. Josh is so hot. Every time I see him, I'm tempted to just grab him and kiss him. I walked up to my bathroom mirror and started to kiss it, pretending it was Josh. I was leaving lipstick marks all over the ice-cold mirror, but I didn't care. Mmm, Josh, you're such a good kisser. Mmm. I kept kissing the mirror as I caressed it with my hands, imagining Josh's perfect face. You're such a psycho, Lucy. The sound of Mel's laughter startled me and I hit my nose in the mirror. Ouch! I turned angrily, clutching my now bleeding nose. What are you doing in my room? Dad sent me to get you and I walked in to see you violating the poor mirror. I can't believe I got all that on video. Wait until I show it to everyone at school. Tracy will love this one. I was horrified. Tracy was Josh's girlfriend and the leader of the mean girl crusade at school. I grabbed Mel trying to take her phone away from her, but she wrestled herself free and ran out of my room. By the time I got to school, Everyone, and I mean everyone, had already seen the video. When I walked to my usual table in the cafeteria during lunch, my friends all packed up their trays and walked away. 
Lucy, right? I was startled from my nightmare by Josh. Wait, why was he talking to me? The last time he even looked my way was when he was failing calculus and Mrs. Roger, our math teacher, asked me to help him out. By the time I was done tutoring him, I developed a huge crush. I knew he was dating Tracy, but I didn't care. I was in love. Hello? Josh waved a hand in my face. Oh, um, yeah, how may I help you? Good god, I sounded like some customer care representative waiting to serve him. So, you think I'm a good kisser? I was going to die of embarrassment. Josh, I'm so sorry, you weren't supposed to see that. It's okay, I, I don't mind. I think it's kind of sweet that you have a crush on me. Maybe we could hang out sometime. What? This had to be a prank. Josh was smiling, waiting for my answer. Um, okay. Sure, I... If it isn't Lucy, the mirror-kissing loser. Tracy walked up and stood next to Josh. Mel and a bunch of other girls joined her. You can fantasize about Josh all you want, but he's mine. Right, Josh? Josh stayed silent. But Josh had been so kind to me a few seconds ago. Was he that afraid of Tracy? I got up from the table, tears already falling from my eyes. I tried to run, but Tracy blocked me. She grabbed my lunch tray and dumped it on my head. Hot soup dripped from my hair to my face. Then she shoved the tray at me. Here, how about you kiss that? Maybe it can be your new boyfriend. She flipped her hair, high-fived her friends, and they walked away laughing. Mel looked back at me and I saw how sad she looked, but she never stayed to help me. She quickly followed Tracy back to their table. Josh watched me with a horrified look on his face. Lucy, I I'm so sorry. Let me help you clean up. Stay away from me. I ran out of there, leaving a trail of soup and most of my lunch on the floor. From that point on, Mel started to avoid me both at home and in school, and she became even meaner to me. She was ignoring me when she was the one that released the video and humiliated me at school. Why was she suddenly treating me like the bad guy? School became a nightmare. I even begged dad to let me drop out and get a job waiting tables or something. He said I was being dramatic, but I wasn't. I sat alone in class and at lunch. Kids made kissing sound whenever I walked by. One day I walked into class and Tracy shouted, here comes Lucy, the mirror kisser. Everyone hide your mirrors, causing everyone to burst into laughter. Just then, I received an anonymous text from someone who claimed to be my secret admirer. They said they liked me a lot and that I shouldn't let the kids at school get to me. At first, I didn't text back, but the person kept texting me every day, sending funny videos and memes that made me laugh. I gave in and started to text back with some funny stuff I saw on the internet. Whoever they were, they made my life at school so much easier. I asked if they'd reveal who they were and they texted back saying, soon. How mysterious. Who do you think it is? One day after PE, I went to the locker room to shower and change, but just when I was washing my face, someone pushed me and I slipped on the slippery floor landing on my butt. I tried to see who it was, but I was blinded by the camera flashes in my eyes. Other girls were taking photos of me and laughing. I screamed my lungs out trying to cover myself. Soon, the flashes stopped and I was left all alone. I picked myself up while crying, put on my clothes, and ran out of the locker room. The next day, I found the word FREAK spray painted on my locker door. I went to open my locker, but it burst open and I was sprayed with a thick green fluid. Everyone was now gathered around me laughing and throwing flyers at me. What was going on? I picked one of the flyers and noticed a picture of me butt naked in the girl's shower. I had had enough and I was very furious now. I screamed as the gooey stuff got into my eyes and mouth. I took one of the flyers and wiped my face with it. Who is responsible for this? Show yourself, you coward! I am sick of these stupid pranks! I stomped my feet and screamed. Tracy stepped forward, laughing. Of course, Mel stood close by her. It was me, 
What are you going to do about it, prison baby? What did you just call me? Freak? Prison baby? Prison baby? I was very confused. And then Tracy threw photos of a woman in an orange prison jumpsuit at me. I noticed the woman in the photos looked a lot like Mel and me. Yeah, you are the daughter of a convict and you were born in prison. No wonder you're a thief who wants to steal Josh away from me. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree, does it? Stop lying, I don't know this woman! I was angry and ready to attack her, but Mel stepped forward and held me back. Please, stop, losing. She looked embarrassed and her head hung in shame. Everything Tracy said is true. What are you talking about? Everyone in the hallway had gone silent watching the drama unfold. The woman in the photo is our mom and she's in prison. Dad has been lying to us. I heard a few gasps. How do you know? Mel explained that she noticed that Dad took secret trips every week, so a few weeks ago, she followed him and was shocked to see him enter a women's correctional facility. Once inside, she saw him sit with a woman. She took photos and confronted him as he was leaving. He was shocked to see her, and he told her that the woman was his wife and our mom. I don't believe you. Look at the photo, she's been in prison for years. Mel was in tears this whole time as she narrated our story, and I just stood there, too stunned to move or talk, just like the rest of the kids who were listening. Well, except for Tracy. She had an evil smile on her face. She was clearly enjoying this. Dad told me not to say anything to you, that he would find a way to tell you eventually. Then why did you tell the whole school? Did you just want to embarrass me? Is that it? I didn't tell anybody. I wrote it in my diary and Tracy stole it. She also found the photos I took on my phone and sent them to herself. Mel furiously wiped tears from her eyes. But you've been so mean to me. You're my sister, but you've made my life so difficult. I didn't mean it, Lucy. Tracy made me do it. She said I had to be mean to you or else she'd show everyone my diary. She's hiding it and has refused to give it back. I was speechless. I'm so sorry. Mel knelt and cried uncontrollably. I wanted to comfort her and forgive her, but it was all too much for me. So I turned to run out of there, but I slipped on the gooey liquid still coming out of my locker. I tripped, but before I could fall, someone grabbed me and steadied me. I looked at my savior and I couldn't believe who it was. It was Josh. I pushed him off me, but he begged me to listen to what he had to say. I... I need to tell you something. What do you have to say to me? That your girlfriend is an evil witch? She's not my girlfriend anymore. I broke up with her. Also, I told her I liked you. Everyone turned to look at Tracy. We all expected her to say that Josh was lying, but she stayed silent. So this is why she hates me? Yes. I'm sorry I didn't stand up to her that day in the cafeteria. I was about to walk away when he told me something even more shocking. He revealed himself as the anonymous texter and my secret admirer. What? You? My secret admirer? He nodded and smiled. Although I was excited, I was still paranoid. Josh, please stop playing games. I can't deal with this cruelty right now. Josh grabbed my wrist, spun me around to face him, and you'll never guess what he did next. He pulled me close to him like they do in romantic movies. He didn't even care that his clothes were getting stained by that disgusting gooey liquid. And before I could pull away, he kissed me. For a minute, everything stopped, and it felt like it was just the two of us. But the moment was interrupted by Tracy screaming like a banshee, bringing me back to my senses. She grabbed me and pulled me away from my Josh. She started pulling my hair and we got into an ugly fight. Mel came to my rescue and together we wrestled Tracy to the gooey liquid covered floor. It was gross. Excited kids cheered wildly and the commotion attracted a couple of teachers who broke up the fight and ordered everyone to go back to class. We were sentenced to detention of course, but it was worth it. <laughs> On our ride home, dad confirmed that everything Mel told me was true. The next day, he took us to visit our mother, and even though she was practically a stranger, we were happy to see her, and so was she. 
A few days later, Josh officially asked me to be his girlfriend, and I said yes. Let's just say I never kissed an imaginary Josh in the mirror again after that. Mel and I worked out our issues pretty fast. She was my sister after all. And we promised each other not to let Tracy or anyone else get between us ever again.